Trigonometry. Sine and cosine rules. The sine and cosine rules apply to all triangles. So they apply to the scalene or oblique triangle where the three sides are different, A, B and C are different in length. There's no common marking indicating that any one is the same length as the other. And the three angles are different also. As with all questions with triangles, it's important to remember to place each lettered side opposite the same lettered angle. Angle A opposite side A, angle B opposite side B, and angle C opposite side C. When solving problems with triangles, the following rules are used. The first rule, which applies to all triangles, is the angle rule which states that A plus B plus C, the three internal angles in a triangle, equals 180. The next rule, the cosine rule, comes in two versions. The first version states that A squared, one of the sides, or really the length of A, but A squared is B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cos A. In other words, if you know two of the sides, the length of two of the sides, and the angle between the two sides, the angle they share in common, you can identify the length of the third side. Another version of the cosine rule can be got by rearranging the equation, taking this cos A to this side and rearranging all the terms. This gives cos A equals B squared plus C squared minus A squared over 2BC. This is useful when all the values on the right hand side are known. So for example if you know A, B and C, if you know the three lengths of the sides, you can calculate one of the angles. Another rule that's used is the sine rule, which states that A over sine A is B over sine B is C over sine C. In other words, the ratio of the side to the angle, the sine of the angle opposite is the same for each of the three sides. So the length of A over the sine of A is the same ratio as the length of B over the angle opposite B and the ratio of the length of C over the angle opposite side C. The typical structure of a question which requires you to use these rules is as follows. You'll be given certain values for elements of the triangle and asked to calculate the remaining ones. So for example, if we consider a triangle as having the three angles and the three sides, there are six things to be identified. But you'll start the question typically with a lot less than six. In this case, for example, you might know one of the angles C, you might know a side C and a side B, and the other three elements might be unknown. And your task is to turn the unknowns into knowns, so that all aspects, all values for the triangle, whether they're angles or sides, become known. So let's start with example one. Here you're given three sides of a triangle and you're asked to find the angle A. So you're given B is 7, A is 5.814 and C is 8. These three values are given and you're asked to find the angle A. So in other words you've got the three sides A, B and C and none of the angles. So we now look to our rule list and see which rule we might use. Well the angle rule is out because we don't know any of the angles. The cosine rule, a squared is b squared plus c squared, would only be useful if we didn't know one of the lengths, but we know all three. The next one, cos a, is b squared plus c squared minus a squared over 2bc, looks promising because we know the three lengths of the sides and we are looking for an angle. So this formula here, the second version of the cosine rule, is what we'll use. So using it, we get that the cos of A is given by B squared plus C squared minus A squared over 2BC. And all of these numbers are known. 
So it's really just a matter of substituting. B is 7, C is 8, and A is 5.814. So substituting the values, we get 7 squared plus 8 squared minus 5.814 squared over 2BC, or 2 times B, which is 7, times 8. And if we work out all that on the calculator, we find that cos A is equal to 0 0.7071. Now, that's useful, but we're interested in the angle A, not the cos of A. But cos has a twin or a paired function, so that if we take the inverse cos of cos, we can eliminate it and just be left with A. So the inverse cos of the left-hand side, inverse cos of cos A, is the inverse cos of the right-hand side. And the inverse cos of cos causes it to be cancelled, leaving us just with the A. A is equal to inverse cos of 0 0.7071. If we put 0 0.7071 in the calculator, press inverse cos, we find that A is 45. So we now have an angle. We have three sides and one angle. So we've progressed the information on the triangle. We now look at example two. We have two sides and a shared angle. Here's a triangle where we're told the angle A is 45, we're told B is 7 and C is 8. So we have two sides and the two sides share this common angle. They both touch on the angle A. So from a pattern point of view we can see that we've got angle A and the sides B and C. So the shared angle. So we look at that pattern and we say which rule might we use? There are the rules again. A plus B plus C is 180 is the angle rule but we don't have enough of the angles. The cosine rule states that A squared is B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cos A. Well we do know two of the sides B and C and we do know the angle that they share. So this one here looks promising. So we'll use the first version of the cosine rule. So transcribing the cosine rule, a squared is b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a, we just substitute values. We have no value for a, but we're looking for it. b on the right hand side is 7, C is 8, 2BC we know, and cos A, well we know that A is 45, so we should be able to get the cos of it with the calculator. So A squared is 7 squared plus 8 squared minus 2 times 7 times 8, cos 45. Now cos 45, on a calculator, 45, press cos, you get 0 0.7071. So if we work out all of that and do the calculations, we get a squared is 7 squared is 49, 8 squared is 64, and 2 times 7 times 8 is 1112 by the cos 40 is 0 0.7071. So continuing that, we get a squared is equal to 64 plus 49 minus 112 by 0 0.7071, or a squared is 33.804. Now, we're not interested in a squared, we're interested in the length a. So, to resolve the a squared, we simply take the square root. a is the square root of 33.804, or plus or minus 5.814. But because we're looking at a distance, or a length of a side, we only consider the positive value. So the positive value, or the length of a, is 5.814. So now we've solved that, we found the length of the third side from the two sides and the shared angle. So now we have three sides and one angle. So we've progressed the triangle onwards. Example three, we have two sides and an opposite angle. In this situation, you're told that A is 45, the side A is 5.814, and side C is 8. So they're the three numbers we've been given. 
we've got two sides but we don't have the shared angle between them. We have this angle which is opposite one of them, one of the sides that we know about. So we've got A and the angle A and the side C. So we look now and we look to our angle rule and we say well, we're not going to be able to use that. The cosine rule, a squared is b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a, this requires that the angle we're talking about is the shared one, and it's not. The second version of the cosine rule says that cosine a is b squared plus c squared minus a squared over 2bc, but that requires all three of the side lengths to be known, and they're not. So the sine rule is the last one a over sine a, b over sine b, and c over sine c. And we do know some of these. We do know both a and sine a, and we have further information on c. So the sine rule is the one we'll go for. So using the sine rule, a over sine a is b over sine b is c over sine c. If we look at the information we have, we have a, the angle A, so we can get sine A, so that looks promising. When it comes to B, we don't know the angle B, and we don't know the side B, so this bit in the middle is fairly hopeless. And C over sine C, well we do know the length of C, but not the angle C. So in effect, we're really relying on A over sine A and C over sine C. But when we have a ratio of two things like this to each other and we know three of the values a sine a or at least we can get sine a from a and we know c we should be able to get the fourth one the sine c so in effect substituting values we get a is 5.814 from here sine a is sine 45 c is 8 and sine c we don't know but sine 45 on a calculator, 45, press sine, is 0 0.7071. So we now can substitute that in there. So 5.814 over 0 0.7071 is 8 over sine c. Now we can solve for sine c through cross multiplication or any way we like. But 5.814 over 0 0.7071 gives us 8.2223 equals 8 over sine c. Multiplying both sides by sine c, taking the sine c up, we get 8.2223 sine c is 8. Dividing both sides by this number, we get sine c is 8 over 8.2223, or 0.97296. So that's the value of sine c. But we're interested in the angle c, so to find c from sine c, we unlock the sine by taking the inverse sine. If we take the inverse sine of the left-hand side, we take the inverse sine of the right-hand side. So inverse sine, sine of c, is inverse sine of this number here. The inverse sine will cancel the sine, so we're left with simply c is inverse sine 0.97296. Entering this in the calculator, 0.97296, and pressing for C, we get C is equal to 76.64 degrees. So 76.64 degrees, we now have two sides and two angles. So we've progressed the triangle forward. Example 4. In this situation, we're given two angles. We're told that A is 45 and C is 76.64 and B is 7. We're asked to find the angle B. Well, in this case, we've got two of the angles already. So, two angles here, but not the angle B. So, we look now, rule for all triangles, the angle rule, a plus B plus C is 180, and we know two of the angles. So this is the rule that looks most appropriate. So A plus B plus C is 180. 
we know that A is 45, C is 76.64. If we add 45 plus B plus C for A plus B plus C, substituting the A with the 45 and the C with the 76.64, we should get A plus B plus C equals 180. B then would be taking the other numbers to the other side, 180 minus the 45 minus the 76.64, or B is equal to 58.36. So we've found the third angle, we now have the three angles plus the one side that we had. So the general approach to the questions then is if you have a pattern like this where you've got two of the angles and one of the sides, the 180 rule with the three angles A plus B plus C equals 180 will solve the remaining angle for you. If we've got two sides and the angle that they share between them, we can use the cosine rule to get the remaining length. If we've got three sides and none of the angles, we can use the other version of the cosine rule to get one of the angles. In this situation, we've got two of the angles and one of the sides, but they are opposite each other. So in this case, we can use the sine rule to get the paired one, in this case, the other length. So one is to this as that is to that. The same ratios apply. And th this is a different version of it where we've got just one of the angles but two of the sides. But we've got the side and the angle opposite each other. So again we can use the sine rule in this case to get the other angle. 